Senator Barras. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. McKay, before, before I give my question on the renewable fuel standard, I'd just like to turn briefly to the, the EPA's so-called clean power plan. Earlier this month, the U.S. Supreme Court granted what the Solicitor General described as an extraordinary and unprecedented request to stay the EPA's regulations. The court stay is in effect until the, lit the litigation uh, over the EPA's regulation is resolved. So a week later, Todd Stern, who is the administration's special envoy for climate change, he was asked whether the United States would still go ahead and sign the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, Mr. Stern responded by saying, we're sticking to our plan to sign. You know, I find the administration's decision on signing this, uh, the, the Paris climate deal, to be nothing short of reckless. It's like signing a loan for a luxury car after you've already been laid off, lost your job. Sure, it's possible you'll be rehired. But there's a strong likelihood that you'll be out of work when the bills come due. So my question to you is, if the court does strike down the EPA's so-called clean power plan, uh, how does the EPA intend to meet the United States obligation under the Paris Agreement? Well, uh, Senator, there were a number of uh, programs that the United States had in mind in developing our commitment under the um, uh, Paris Agreement. Uh, this Clean Power Plan is not the only one. Um, e EPA is not the only actor um, in the uh, space to reduce uh, emissions of harmful greenhouse gases. And uh, we are committed to continuing to, um, to work with all stakeholders um, to, to, to develop and, and implement those programs. I would also um, uh, point out uh, that the, um, the, the evidence of the increased in, uh, increase in use of renewable fuels and energy efficiency um, is, is very robust. Um, those fuel, those uh, types of energy are growing even, even without the extra push of the clean power plant. So we see those trends going in the right direction. So you're saying today to this committee that you can meet, or the United States can meet the obligations without the clean power plan. I'm saying that there are a number of programs uh, already um, contemplated, and uh, uh, 2025 is many years away. I, I think everybody expected that there would continue to be um, efforts made to reduce uh, carbon emissions across uh, the, the, the wide range of opportunities. So, so to meet the U.S. obligations, you do not need the Clean Climate Plan. That's what you're saying. That's your testimony. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that um, there are many opportunities, and uh, I am also confident that uh, the Clean Power Plan will ultimately be upheld and, and go into effect. Um, but th these are important goals, and the United States is committed to meeting them. So the Supreme Court granted the EPA, well, the EPA's own lawyer said this was an extraordinary and unprecedented stay request. So I'm having trouble understanding your confidence that the court will uphold the Clean Power Plan, so there's been a change in the court with the death of Justice Scalia. But, the, but the, it just seems that the administration is acting recklessly uh, on the hope that uh, who is elected president and what happens with a, a Supreme Court nominee rather than uh, just realizing and admitting that you can't pr keep the promises that you've made in Paris, that the administration has made in Paris, if uh, the court rules against the Clean Power Plan. Well, the stay issued by the court um, had no explanation. It was not a statement on the merits of the rule at all. Um, courts sometimes issue stays while litigation is going forward, and that's how we see this one. Uh, there have been stays. That's not how you see it. The EPA's own lawyer, the U.S. Solicitor General, called it extraordinary and unprecedented. So no, it's not a routine sort of a thing. For the Supreme Court to step in, that, that was uh, unprecedented. But it is not, uh, it, there's no expression of, uh, of any um, uh, uh, consideration of the merits of the Clean Power Plan. It is a procedural step.